All right. Well, hello, everyone. It is six o'clock, Tuesday, August the 20th. And as promised, we are live with a very, very special individual that's actually joining uh, the DAP project, which we're very, very excited about. I'll give everybody a couple of minutes um, to tune in. And this series, once again, uh, is meet the adjudicators that we have in place for the DAT um, Project A. So a couple weeks ago, we had uh, Ms. Jennifer Nichols, who we were very, very excited to hear from. Once again, she's an absolutely incredible um, ballet world superstar, really, both in terms of uh, performer herself, choreographer, producer. And so we were very lucky to have her on the show and make some time amidst her busy schedule. Now, guys, before, uh, I'm just going to let uh, you guys tune in for um, shortly while we start. Just a reminder, you are welcome to ask questions as um, myself and Jeff will be speaking. So just comment in the box below, uh, in the comments below the webinar in Facebook, and you will be, um, your questions will come in live. Now, once again, guys, we're talking about the DAT project, the incredible uh, show dance competition being held, the finale gala that's being held on October 26th at the Betty Oliphant Theater. And if you are not familiar with it, but you happen to tune into this channel, watch this. So there you go, that gives you a little bit more insight about um, that project and what it's all about. And just a quick reminder before, once again, um, we bring the fabulous Jeff Dimitri on board, I wanted to let everybody know that our um, website for that project day has actually been updated, so it's as it's going to pull up on the screen. So guys, all of the information about the project is now on here. I know a few of you were asking about certain specifications, judging criteria, so we do have our celebrity judging panel, as well as our host, um, Patricia Jagannot from CP24, uh, Bell5 TV and CTV is going to be the show host for DAP Project Day Finale Gala, so we're super excited to have her, and we will have a um, session with her as well, so stay tuned for that. Once again, you register by submitting a WeTransfer link right on the site, um, and you will be invited to the live audition, which is by invite only, and then to the finale gala if you make it to that route. All of the prize money is on here as well. Now, if you are looking for more info about the rules and regulations, guys, just click on the rules tab here. We have the video submission criteria criteria, age restrictions, um, basically uh, overall judging criteria. So you can find that all on there. Make sure you check it out. And then, of course, if you're looking for more information on the gala, that page has now also been updated, so you can see for yourself everything that is happening um, at the gala. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a great event. All right, so now I'm sure you guys are all excited, uh, as I've been chatting quite a bit, to bring on once again an absolute really close individual to me in terms of personality. He's absolutely a pleasure to work with. I've had. Um, the honor to intersect with him on several occasions. And um, this person is just not a not only a fabulous creator, choreographer, director, producer, but also a very, very soulful um, human being that truly cares about the dancers that he works with, about the productions that he puts on stage, about um, the development of the whole dance scene in Canada, um, I would say and beyond, uh, states, the world, what have you. And so he's, doing incredible initiatives such as the Dimitri Dance Intensive, um, such as the JDX Creative Company that is founded, which we're gonna let him chat about a little bit further. Um, but to those of you, and I'm sure all of you that are tuning in know him, have maybe even had a chance to work with him. But in the case that you don't, um, I did want to show you just a snippet, a very small snippet of some of his works and he's done incredible things in the dance scene. So this is just a little teaser of uh, some of his work that I really would like for you guys to see because I was blown away when I watched this, okay? So here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, just watching that, I'm I'm so in awe of this individual, how much he's happened to accomplish already to date, and he's still so young. Um, so I'm humbled, as you can see, he's no stranger to stage, to film, Degrassi, Cirque du Soleil, you know, Schitt's Creek that he's working on right now. Um, I am very, very humbled and excited to have him be a part of that. Let's welcome this incredible producer, director, choreographer, Mr. Uh, Jeff Dimitriou. Jeff, welcome. Hey, what's up, friend? You're Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm well. How are you? Thanks so much I'm for live. joining us. I know we're all swamped with everything in your life. <laughs> so, you know, thanks Thank so much you. for joining Thank us. Thank you. This is the first time. How does it feel? You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Be mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, it feels that my dog has just joined me. He, he just stepped into the picture. So this is what happens when you're live. <laughs> I'm a big um, fan of dogs, so that's okay. <laughs> no dog that I think has ever existed. So uh, it was a lovely introduction. Thank you so much. It was humbling, uh, but it uh, it kind of you know, puts you in good space. I did do that stuff. Uh, yeah, but grab me. Yeah, pat, pat yourself on the yeah. back, right? <laughs> but exactly. um, I, you know, as soon as something's done, you're kind of moving on to the next creation. Yeah, sometimes you get so busy wrapped up in everything that you forget actually how much you've already done beforehand. And um, I think you know, I, I'm I'm very excited to have you be part of um, the debt project for a specific reason, which I'm going to allude to a little bit later on in the webinar. But I wanted. I tried to give people an overview of, of course, everything that you've done, but I did want to maybe give you a few words um, to just speak about, you know, some of your best accomplishments, how you felt as a performer, you transitioned to doing more choreography productions, et cetera, and, and just maybe chat about yourself a little bit before we move on to the uh, dance, sure. uh, discussion. Sure, sure. I always find it odd to talk about myself um, and course asked in every single interview <laughs> uh, but I essentially started dancing when I was about three I quit for a little while because I couldn't get a chair um down you know we were doing a chair dance and I chair down out of the corner so I quit <laughs> I was at Brian Fart uh so I quit I was very ashamed that, um in that moment and then I found dance and I think when I was about 14, uh, I saw a performance happening and I, I asked, actually, I demanded that my parents go talk to whoever, whoever was the coordinator of the project. And I, that's the dance school I went to. And it was actually called Run. And, you know, funny enough, um, after your background, I learned all as well as 
jazz, ballet, tap, tap hip hop. So I learned all my dances. Nice. Uh, so from and, there, and that's, that's it, it just it's for you. <laughs> right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, definitely a whole wheelhouse to play from. So uh, it was a good studio. Of course, I branched after there and in studios, particularly Metro Movement uh, and Randolph went back in the day. Uh, but I think uh, I turned professional, I think, I believe I was about 15, um, turning and, and started booking, booking and stuff. So I never really was without work, thankfully. Um, and then in a rank, I'm terrible with years. Okay, no concept of when projects happened, when things happened. They just sort of like happened. So I'm not, uh, I forget when. It was the sort of Soviet Canada, I suppose, where uh, I know this person really that well. He became a friend. And I worked with him on um, the show. And from there, it sort of led me into the choreography path that I'm on, as well as directing a producing and crazy uh, um, but at the end of the day very fruitful so very happy with what's been happening so far but you know you know like you know those hills and valleys right it's like that lifelong you see on all the all the medical shows that the, truth, the truth is is that that straight line that right that it implies that you're, you're dead it's just straight straight across yeah yet life, the lifeline is actually and that, that is so for the actual truth. And just knowing even when you're down, you're still alive. Yeah. And I think a lot of the times um, as dancers, you know? right, particularly as dancers, because we're sometimes so um, harsh on ourselves, right, especially when we're trying to improve and et cetera. And, you know, some people might look at some of, let's say, your top accomplishments, like you've choreographed Degrassi and Schitt's Creek and Pan American Games and, you know, Cirque du Soleil and, and all these um, big name productions. And they don't know the work that's sometimes going behind that and less so even the work, more so the belief in yourself. Um, and, and the belief in sort of your creativity, right? And, and I find that oftentimes people focus too much on the result of what they want to accomplish and not enough time on self-discovery um, and playing with different genres and playing with different styles and maybe um, elements of dance and et cetera. And so um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to a little bit more of a, of a question about, you know, why you had decided to get involved with that. But I think a lot of the time it's important for people to, venture out into their creativity, to venture out into what's possible for them and explore, right? And, and explore, maybe not just be so focused on sort of the one, one specific genre that they are perfecting. But I'll actually go right to my last question because I do think we're on that kind of topic. But, you know, you're very versatile across everything you've done. Um, and so that leads me to ask, what is creativity and what does it mean to you specifically, like as a performer, as an adjudicator, as a creator, as a performer? Um, what does that mean to you? So I mean that we see everything, that we are everything, just everything has been created, has the essence of creation within it. Uh, so what does it mean specifically? Joy, expression, expression, and I was about to say Creation and creativity can have many different forms of expressing itself, right? So, for example, um, I have artwork paints as well, right? So these this, these are two of my pieces. And, um, you oh, know, I yes. don't... Thank you. <laughs> so, for example, um, I do not paint. I do not, I'm not thinking of anything. I'm allowing the universe to channel through me, and I'm allowing it to express itself. Um, there's not a premeditated creation happening the night when I do my artwork. Um, and actually, I've, I've grown so much in that creative world that um, when I decided that I wanted to be an, not just a photographer, I didn't want to be a director, I wanted to be a producer, I didn't want to be, I didn't want, I just wanted to be an artist. And when I made that decision, 
all of the goat of the genre, genre, different energies came into my being, uh, allowed me to self and express the universe and its feelings through all of these different um, ideas. Like right now I'm choreographing the program for Piper A. Now they're, they're poised to be the Canadian Ice Dance champions. So we're working on their Olympic, uh, uh, sorry, their world program. And I mean, like I've dreamt of like that skating, but that's just one avenue that has come forward to my life that I'm now able to choreograph in. I don't skate, I do a lot of work off ice. And then what's so incredible is I'm always on learning uh, on the journey um, and incredible to be part and to be, and to be under the rink. You know, it's freezing. It's absolutely freezing, but it is, it's, it's so incredible to just be able to have the, to be an artist and, you know, painting <laughs> with figure skating, with creating, with uh, writing music and all of it is creativity to me. So there are people that specialize and, or not specialize, but are one energy only, or you had mentioned before, focused on the, the or the what it was and don't get there before. I was there on a on a hustle sort of train, uh, and I was unhappy, and I was also all that didn't serve me truly uh, as a person, didn't serve the value system that I had, and once I realized that life and it's what I get to create, and at the end of the day, all that stuff you're working towards for your credit, for for the next movie, the next TV maybe means nothing i mean we die okay we die we can't read those credits nobody remembers who you are it's not about that it's about experience in life and uh yeah. living in the moment yeah. do the best i can on that so. and i and i love to be honest um all of no that's i think that's a very um thought through response for creativity because i think you enveloped it all right because you're right sometimes it's, you can't just separate creativity into, well, I'm just a dancer, I'm just a this. You draw inspiration from sort of everything, I would imagine, right? And kind of be open to everything. And what I find specifically with you is you seek to give opportunity um, to other performers to develop creativity. So whether it's with, you know, JDX Creative, where you do a lot of different creative projects for, for live events, or with um, Dimitri Dance Intensive that just passed recently, where you give a lot of performers the chance to try something new. Um, from what I gather, it's, you know, taking their onstage um, skill and putting it in front of a camera. And, and how does that differ from a performer being on stage to on camera? And so I think for me, that's sort of one of the, the biggest important elements of a producer, director, choreographer is when they're opening up opportunities to dancers, when they're opening up their creativity outlets as well. And so um, just wanted to, to say that, that what you're doing is, is absolutely awesome with uh, both of those. Dance intensive. Uh, it, it's, been on, it's been an idea I've had for a long time. Uh, the seed was planted many five to eight. Uh, I don't know how, but I, uh, at that time because no right time, and I didn't quite sure. I wasn't quite sure of I wanted the full experience to be okay. So when I finally went ahead with it this year, um, I was egged on by by a very good friend of mine because there were moments of oh, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if this time. I don't know why. and. Just do it. And to send uh, advanced and pre-professional then to a, um, into, from in-studio work, like, like building a piece, um, putting them in front of choreographers that would be hiring them in the future, potentially. Yeah. And very high valued in, uh, uh, individuals and artists who have so much integrity, which really are as in line with my energy, uh, and it and it turned into magical experience. It really did. Uh, Sixty applicants, and uh, it was. I'm really like I'm still absorbing it. To be honest with you, it just it just we just wrapped on Friday, and uh, it was a magical experience. And I really wait to the, the, the of the journey for that. 
them is taking it from the studio and then we go on location and they get their hair and makeup or costume design and what it's like to be on set. So within the within the intensive, they learn set etiquette, they learn talk to professional dance in the industry, we talk about we talk about agents, we talk about um, makeup and what that means or an audition and so on. And so on. But it just it's just it's really organic and it was the right time. It was the right time. Same with JDX Creative. It's, it's continuously building and um that's something that I had to be patient with because I think as artists and things the idea is there. It's like okay, why why is it right now? But the truth is yeah. that the universe wants it to happen when it's supposed to happen. The JDX Chris I, I call him my entertainment JD I think of. I kind of just do. <laughs> and um there's a lot of stuff coming up through JDX. So I did. So if you if you do want to um, of course get in touch with Jeff, you can get uh, him on Instagram or the website jeffsmitru.net. You can find out more about him or JDX Creative, see what he's up to. Um, so lots and lots of things, and not to add any more to your plate, but I guess thank you for for being um, part of that, and thank you for being on our adjudicating panel. And that leads me into actually my next question of. Why is it that you chose to get involved with the project in the first place? And, and sort of what is it to you from your perspective? Okay, well, first of all, um, you and I, I think you and I and Anton had uh, uh, it was an expression of the idea. And I, and okay, you, you know, like I really like, like to understand what projects are and what, and what my sort of energy would add, add to it um, and really understand sort of is this in line with my value system, you know? And uh, me and with both of you, and I know you, you and I have been crossed many times, and there's always between us, and and I always see you a, a lot of and man inspiration and a willingness, and uh, in in this artistic world and this world, we really need to do that. Those are the types of people that um, are creating change. So we learned, I learned, uh, uh, I was just interested in, in, in participating. I think it's going to be inspiring to see the in front of us and to be part of that and to help mentor them uh, as, as much within, within that scope. Although it's a real great opportunity to, to allow, allow myself to be inspired allow myself to be inspired and to be around good people and support a project that is that is surrounded with with high integrity thank you no i appreciate that thank you that, that means a lot coming from you and um and i think with you know with it, it's especially coming from you it's actually a very powerful um thing because i take integrity very highly on my radar and I take the chance to give opportunity to performers very highly um, whether it's through you know paid show opportunities with Phuket or with JDX or what have you right so so show opportunities that they can get paid they can they can express themselves or opportunities to get creative um, and to put themselves in front of potential employers such as choreographers directors producers um, just get themselves out there because I find too often Coming from a competitive background myself, too often artists give up. Um, give up either because it's financially difficult um, and they see no avenues to make that, or they give up because they've hit a roadblock in their creative outlet and their inspiration outlet. Um, and sometimes all that's missing is a new perspective or a new or a new comment or a new eye or a new opportunity. And I think that was really the driver behind the DAP project is to get people to be inspired by all the different genres that there are, um, all the different possible ways of moving our body, of interpreting music, of interpreting use of you know ideas, period. And, and that's sort of what really drove us to get the idea of the debt project. And I'm happy that you know it's, it's gaining momentum, it's gaining visibility, people are excited about it, and, and, um, and of course to have you on board. So um, that leads me into my next question of those of you, you know, those dancers that are watching us and they submitted videos or they have yet to submit videos. Um, 
and they're thinking in their mind, well, what is it going to take for me to make it to that finale round? Because, you know, I want to perform on stage. I want to be in front of the judges. I want to get those opportunity. I want to get that financial reward of, you know, the $10,000 price purse. I want, I want, I want. How do I do that? So I think a good, um, a good helpful hint that we can give them is, from your perspective, what do you want to see from the dancers that are submitting their pro dance videos? And what are you looking for as a judge? Okay, so um, the artists have to look at this stage as a canvas. And uh, there are, there. Say, let's take a, a painting, for example, okay? It, it's, a, it's a clear canvas. And you can decide when to create something that is, uh, is sort of abstract. Okay, but regardless, it must be pleasing to the eye. And I don't mean happy necessarily. I just mean it needs to be good in some way. Okay? And in a, and in a, what's that word? I don't know if I <laughs> said it correctly. Yeah. Um, but but um, I, I want to. I want to feel something basically. So um, I'm, I'm hoping to see a whole wide range of, of, of dancers and art you know, circus to, uh, to jazz, to ballet, to rock, to uh, belly, to ball, ballroom, to, to, you know, from Lassie, a whole wide range of age. Um, and really, uh, allow that to be showcased well. So, so wh wherever you are going with your piece, has intention to it, and it's not just a showpiece, right? Because I think, I think we can get, I would get bored by a show showpiece. Okay, just that, and I mean a showpiece to me, being a fun with no meaning behind behind it. Uh, it or I'm looking to feel something. That's what I'm looking for. So uh, would you being say, clean, being clean, sorry, being clean on stage, meaning meaning the dancers or the dancer, dance, you know, however many dancers there are on stage should 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 be clean enough that we're able to appreciate the visual, appreciate what it makes. So, so you know, you don't want dancers on stage who or um. I don't want to see that for the finale. Absolutely not. That I think the DAP project is is going towards a, a higher level than that. And um, it doesn't mean you can't audition for it or submit. It just means that the next step would be then is to make that sure that it's visual. We can even yeah. if it's absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So what I think we, we if, ask, I, if I if I can interpret, uh, let's say a question that on my side, right? So authenticity, um, emotional appeal, right? So something that you can connect with um, and, and visual, visual appeal maybe is, is the correct, yeah. would, you, would you say it's more visual appeal and put together clean, um, clear of the idea that they're trying to translate? Is, am I catching on to that accurately? Yeah, yes, you are and you know, uh, it doesn't necessarily even have to be something that is so creepy because there are pieces that I've seen that I've created myself as well that are based in the in a very abstract world that aren't the story isn't necessarily like Mary went to the store and Mary bought you know like ten apples or like it's it's much than that it could be a feeling it could be you know, I am expressing anger, or I am expressing passion, I am expressing love, or and, and there are so many different colors to the, even those three words, right? So uh, I, I would hope that we can have love and anger, or those are valid energies to be working with. Uh, there's like surrendering stuff like power mm -hmm. for vulnerability, stuff like being uncomfortable, you know, uh, so many different ways you can go feel. It doesn't have to be so in the, in the face. It just means that the intention and the integrity of the piece should be coming from a place that, 
at least with the art creating it, then it'll resonate with us. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, we've had a lot of questions from dancers of, well, do you recommend that I just stick to my genre of what I know? So let's say I'm a ballerina and, you know, I have a fabulous ballet show piece, or do you think that I should fuse different elements together and get more creative with prop use or with, um, with themes? So what would you say to answer that question? I would say do that if you want to win. <laughs> Simple. I like to be honest with you. This is this is a this is a dance competition. So uh, we want best, right? We don't want you can use this as, as a playing ground, playground. But if you are you want to try to infuse some hip hop in it, uh, on, and you really aren't a hip hopper, why? Like I truly ask, I would be like, why? Why would you do that? Showcase the best of what you have. Right. right. Awesome. And win. then, I guess... <laughs> and who doesn't want to win, right? I mean, who doesn't want to win? Of course, you're submitting. <laughs> and and then, then I guess the last whole... question. I was going to say, if you have a whole two minute to work with, then. Go for it. Yeah, I would love to see ballroom um, connected with with some hip hop, some um, uh, you know different forms of dance, like uh, Bollywood. You know, like, like curate a story in that. If, if it's not, stick. Sticks we have, yeah. And I think what you nailed on us right now that was very powerful is create a story. Create a story that we buy into, that we believe, that we live through um, on stage. And, you know, sometimes, and again, I wanted to take your opinion on this. Would you rank a dancer that is completely technically, quote unquote, perfect, clean, clean lines, speed, you know, but is emotionless and there's no story to their show? Or would you take an individual who maybe has, you know, not the perfect turnout, has um, uh, less of a technical ability, let's say, but is very believable and authentic and real and created a story. For me, in my mind, I can vouch for both of those, right? Because I think both of those have a place. But if you were to judge, which one would you select? Um, I wouldn't be too. Kind of like the same wheel, uh, you know? Uh, if the really technical dancer is has gorgeous lines and she's and and she or he or whatever they are really using them, then uh, and it's and, and it's very pleasing to appreciate and it feels something still because it's so gorgeous. Different, okay. I will accept that. I can appreciate if there, there's an artist on stage that is the same technique but is living there their expression in such a way that it's affecting me, uh, uh, then that is valid as the, the, it's very strong technique. So it's really dependable on on what I'm seeing in front of me, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that that's fair. So guys, um, don't shy away. If sometimes, you know, if you feel you're a strong dancer, but you're not maybe a show performer, give it a shot right? You just never know until you try. If you're a weaker technical performer, but you have a story to deliver, try. Because again, um, you just never know how you're going to feel on that stage and what you might push yourself to do. So that's just a little little tidbit for me. And so right. I guess, Jeff, right. before that, 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 say that again? That's sorry. I forget that there's a bit of a lag. I, I would always want an artist to go for go forward you know fear is here for us to to see and to feel and to um to appreciate and not 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 to walk away to okay if you can't go through the fear then you go around the fear and you keep moving forward so so always go towards the fear because that is lead you to the greatest um outcome and the greatest gift and so don't so be guess, afraid. Go for don't it. Don't be afraid. If, if, I, that was going to be my next question. What would you have um, 
words of wisdom, words of advice before we wrap up because we're almost um, wrapping up and we're finished. But last words of advice to dancers that are watching, to dancers that are thinking of submitting, and just dancers in general. Yeah, but just press the and press the go button there. Nothing happened there. Nothing. You'll just stand in the same place. And and the and humans are meant to move forward. Amen. <laughs> Love so that. that would, move on. Get creative. Get past the fear and. Um, I, um, <laughs> and amen. Yes. Well, Jeff, thanks so much once again for for being with us and. Um, yeah, we'll see you, I guess, on uh, the live audition and then at the finale gala on the 26th. You will. Looking. Take care. Thanks so much for, for making the time. Take care. Thank you. So, guys, just a quick reminder that the video submission deadline um, is going to be at the end of September. We're going to announce the live audition date very soon, but get your videos in because the sooner you get them in, the sooner you have, a ch uh, the more chances you have to win the most liked video contest, uh, which is also running. So make sure to submit your videos, datproject.ca. And of course, check out the, web the uh, website, Instagram, what have you, and we will see you soon. Take care.